Hello, guys. I am Jenny Guy, and I am the Director of Marketing for Mediavine. How is everyone doing? Uh, Caitlin and I, our guest today, just had a awesome experience where she was um, in black and white, so there was a wrong, she kind of looked like Paranormal Activity, the movie, if you've seen that, but we're all good now, which is awesome. Caitlin <laughs> is cool as a cucumber. Um, but today is Thursday, June 25th, and we are so glad to have you with us and for us to have the opportunity to be with you today for another episode of the Mediavine Summer of Live. We have got quite a few common refrains around these parts for content creators, and one of our most uh, popular ones is diversify your revenue streams. We say it all the time. Uh, while Mediavine ad management is our primary offering as a company, we strongly believe, and I will look directly into the camera on this one, that ad revenue should not be your only source of revenue. Please, affiliate marketing can be a very lucrative part of your blogging business strategy, but it takes some work to be successful. Enter today's guest, Caitlin Fagan, in color, thank God, and she is here to talk about improving in-post affiliate earnings. I'm going to introduce Caitlin. She is a wife and homeschooling mom of five kids who is currently pregnant with her second set of twins due at the beginning of September. What? We can talk more about that later. She grew up in Wisconsin, but currently lives in New York. She graduated from Brigham Young University in 2011. Over the last seven years, she's built up a successful blog business while growing her family. That's kind of the understatement. Her website is What's Up Fagans, which is dedicated to resources for family-focused living. Along with helping families better manage home and life, she also loves helping bloggers make more money, especially through affiliate marketing. Perfect for today. She and Katie Clark run a free blogging Facebook group and have created several blogging courses for new to intermediate bloggers, which can be found at bestblogcourses.com. And she's got a special offer for you guys today. 10% off of any of those courses of her courses with the code SUMMER OF LIVE, all caps. So SUMMER OF LIVE. We'll drop the link into the comments for you guys to go check out. And and please visit and learn more. And welcome, Caitlin. Thank you for um, being amazing and also for <laughs> handling all of the craziness with, with aplomb and calm. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm so excited that I still get to share this with you guys because I didn't get to go to Baltimore this year. Um, so yeah, I was going to do this presentation there. So I'm excited to get started here. But we're, we'll probably go a little bit long, you guys. If you're here uh, and you followed us through all of these things, please ask us your questions. We're so glad to have you. Um, we are going to be talking about improving your in-post affiliate uh, earnings. But first, just to kind of say hi and tell us that you're here. On a scale of 1 to 10, uh, tell us how you feel about yourself as an affiliate marketer. 1 being, I don't know what you're talking about. And 10 being, I am a 1,000% uh, ninja with my affiliate marketing. Okay, Caitlin. <laughs> we alrighty. As we always do on on most of our lives here, uh, I start out with the general before we get into the specifics, which we will definitely be diving into improving in post affiliate earnings. But first, let's talk about how you got into affiliate marketing and why you believe it is such a necessary revenue stream for content creators. So, how much can we make? How much of a time investment is requested? Bottom line: sell us on affiliate marketing. Um, I think like most bloggers, I got started with the Amazon Associates program. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously everyone knows Amazon. It's an easy place to get started. Um, but then I kind of got into like some surveys because I'd personally taken some surveys way back in the day. Yeah. Um, and found out, oh, I can make money telling other people to sign up, right? Um, and some like cash back and some like freebie offers and some other things and right. sort of word of mouth heard about different programs. And I was like, sure, I'll sure. Let's try to make some extra bucks. And, you know, this idea of diversifying your income obviously mm -hmm. was attractive to me. Mm -hmm. um, I eventually stumbled across like subscription boxes and that really ups my affiliate game quite a bit yeah. um, with like one post that made me like hundreds of dollars. So like I was sold after that, like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> Like, uh, who doesn't want to make passive income, especially when you focus like on affiliate marketing through your website. And I'm a busy person with lots of kids. And <laughs> I'm a lot more. Yeah, and more coming. So my goal is like been through the years to figure out ways to build up that passive income. And so 
once I kind of married SEO with affiliate marketing, um, I was able to make a lot of income without having to promote constantly or to rely just solely on social media or all these other things. And so that was a big kind of turning point and is figuring all that out. Um, and it's how much you can make, you know, it's, it's really up to you and how much you put into it and figure out you know, if you want to tweak things, if you're going to use email and social media as well, or just where on the blog to earn your money um, from affiliates. But, you know, quarter four, you know, I can make like just as much as I make from my Mediavine ads uh, or I have in the past, which is amazing. So like you can make thousands of dollars a month from affiliate marketing if you if you really work at it. Um, so it might be more active than passive, but it's all good. <laughs> well, it's active. I'm, I'm sure in it. I mean, we say, we don't like to say ads are necessarily passive either because you can earn if you just do it and put it out there and, and let it be. But if you're actually actively trying to optimize and, and do better then it, it's not passive, but how much time would you say to be a little more specific in terms of focusing on creating new content or focusing on affiliate, working on affiliate marketing in terms of your week? How do you break that down? Can you give like a, a percentage? Um, so usually I include affiliate links in the emails I send out to my newsletter and that's about every week. I don't always send them out, but sometimes I send off like one-off emails too uh, for promotions or sales or whatever. So it kind of depends, but you know, that's once a week. I don't promote as much on social, uh, but then when it comes to any article I write on my blog, I try to include affiliate links. So it's just kind of a natural thing. Um, sometimes I specifically write content to sell affiliate stuff as well. So it's kind of just married into what I'm already doing. So I don't know how to answer that. No, it's become, it's become intuitive to you. It's become yeah, it you know, like, and I loved hearing about the marriage of SEO and affiliate. And we're going to be getting into that more as we go through. But it's so great to hear that those things can coexist because I think that it might be that some people are thinking about, well, if I use affiliate, that's a separate thing from SEO and could even be count like possibly conflicting with each other that you can't have great SEO and be focusing on affiliate earnings at the same time. So yeah. let's dispel those myths. We've got a lot of, um, we've got a lot of fives here saying in, in terms of their affiliate expertise, we've got some, the uh, six, that's good. A couple of threes, a 2.5 that is very specific. <laughs> um, and we've got a couple of nines. So that's exciting. All right. Awesome. So, so let's, um, Let's talk a little bit about, before we get into, again, with a specific existing post optimization, let's talk about some of your site-wide recommendations for affiliate marketing. And we've got some okay. visual aids that we're gonna show here too. So let's do that. Yeah, so I mean, the reality is, I hope you can see this. <laughs> yeah. Hope you guys see that okay. Yeah, the reality is a lot of times, um, there's some simple things you can do to increase your sales and they're like site-wide kind of tweaks you can make. So one of them is just changing your link appearance. If people don't know there's a link in your blog post, they won't know to click it. And so you see here that, you know, an easy way to do that is just changing your site-wide linking structure. And so I have some example CSS you can add to your WordPress um, customized uh, I don't know, sidebar. And it will show you that, like, then you can change it so that it's bold, it's underlined, and it's whatever color you want. Now, you can keep your colors along with your theme. That's good. It should be lighter, though. Um, you don't want to do, like, a navy color or maybe even a purple. Um, typically, like, some of the best colors to choose are just that generic blue color um, that everyone knows and recognizes kind of universally is a hyperlink. So you want to... Um, you want to make sure the underline as well is kind of signifies as well that this is a hyperlink, you should click on it. And it, it, it increases that um, that uh, appeal, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a really simple fix you can do. I don't know if you guys wanna like, I don't know, save this screen and you can do this on your own site. Um, okay, so another thing, Oh, right. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. I don't know. Oh, if you no. can, hear, can you hear me when I'm not? No, I couldn't room? hear you. Well, I'm here. I'm just okay. lurking so we can make the, make the screen sharing okay. bigger. Okay. If you yeah. want, so if you want, with all the craziness, guys, we didn't have uh, as much time for us to talk about how we wanted this to go before uh, the poop hit the fan. So Caitlin, when you're ready for a slide or there's something specific you want me to do, even if you can't see me, just say, Jenny, slide this and I'll, I'll take care of it for you. Okay, perfect. But I'm here. I'm not gone. I'm just hiding. 
<laughs> okay. So another thing that uh, you should probably do for kind of site-wide link management, as well as just this will save you a lot of time and energy should a company switch from impact radius to CJ or vice versa, is using a, um, a link cloaker service like a Thrifty Affiliate, so it's called Thirsty, Thirsty Affiliates. Um, I use an easy affiliate plugin, I think it's what it's called. Um, and so you can see here on the screen where you just have, you know, the company name and you can see stats though, like how many people are clicking this month, how many people have clicked over the lifetime, and you can then customize it too. So my links here, it's, it's what's up Fagans with a forward slash recommends and then a forward slash, you know, whatever I decide. So usually the company name, but then I can change the link. If I change the link on the back end here, it'll automatically update all the links on my site to, to edit all the, the short links I had put into different blog posts. So I don't have to go in and individually edit them. And you can see here um, that this is how it looks like when you're in your WordPress editor, there's a little blue special link icon that shows up and those little dots under Land's End and Hapari and stuff, those are the affiliate links. And so anytime I mentioned Land's End or Hapari in different uh, blog posts, if I use the special short code affiliate link, then all of them will all link to the same thing. So it's really helpful for managing links and not having to worry and stress about, you know, changes to things. Um, here, we'll go to the next one because it's a little harder to understand. Okay. So an, a plugin that I really love and it's free is the advanced ads plugin. It's actually like designed for Google AdSense, um, but it's so useful for affiliate marketing. So you can add site-wide banners with it. You can add category-wide banners. You can add temporary promotions and coupon codes with set publish and expiry dates, which is the big like, Oh my gosh, I love this thing. Um, and you can choose placement locations really easily for all of that content. So I show you on the right side of the slide then kind of what it looks like on the back end. Um, and here is the uh, ultimate homemaking bundle, for example. So they're live this week, right? And I'm promoting them or trying to, I'm not doing very well with it, but <laughs> that's a different story. But I have, you have to know some HTML to use this. Okay, so, you know, get out your tech tech stuff here, um, tech knowledge. But you can see though that there is a publish date and there's an expiry date. So this sale ends after Friday. And so it's set to expire then at you know, 2 a.m. Pacific time or something. Well, 2 a.m. I guess my time, anyway. But um, so it's set to expire then um, automatically. So I don't have to go in and change, you know, 100 different blog posts that mention different things. And this is also, um, here, can we go to the next slide? Okay. So you can see here, I've only selected this banner to show up on certain categories because it's homemaking related. I don't, not everything I have is homemaking related or people might not be interested in it. And I also set the placement. In this case, I was like, let's just put it top, foremost, whatever. And so this is before content, but you can put it after content, after so many paragraphs, you can put it at the end, you can put it in the middle, you can do all sorts of different placements for it within your content and you just set it up on the back end and it'll auto populate and auto delete once the expiry has come and gone. So it's a super awesome plugin and I'll show you kind of how I use it then for coupons like within the body of a post as well with the next slide. Okay, so here you can see like this is my HTML code um, for a, a sale that's going on at swimoutlet.com going back to that same original post. If you click Jenny, okay. So you can see in my post that I, I can add them with the Gutenberg blocks. It's just you click on advanced ads and then I select the swim outlet 4th of July sale and it'll populate then whenever that sale is live. Once the sale disappears, you'll, it'll just close up you know, the paragraphs and you won't see a big gap or something in your blog post because obviously you want things to look nice. Um, and so if you click over again, you'll see what it looks like in post. So in post then, because this sale is live, you see all the wordage that I put on that first slide, you know, with the HTML and the save 25%. And so that promo code will just automatically show up when that ad is filled. So sometimes too, I create a group um, just to make sure that like I always have an ad or something there. Um, there's a lot you can do with advanced ads. It's a little 
it's hard to figure out, but I really encourage you to figure it out <laughs> because it's really handy. You can just have these short codes put in to uh, next to companies that you talk about in your blog post. And then every time you get those emails from your affiliate managers about a sale coming up and they're like, hey, you should promote this. And you're like, oh, I don't wanna go into my 10 posts that mention Swim Outlet or mention you know, whatever affiliate you are for, then you don't have to. You just put it once on the back end and it auto populate in all those locations, which is so helpful because guys, coupons sell. So <laughs> um, coupons are very handy. Everyone loves to save money. We all love coupons. I mean, yes. there's no there's no lie about that. I okay. We have a bunch of comments and questions, yes. uh, and I want to go ahead and go to that. Um, the only way that people can see the slides is if I make them full screen, and then I can't see what's happening. So that's what. So please excuse the delay, folks. Okay. Yes. All righty. Some of the questions that we have. Um, one, the first one is to do with the discount for your courses. How long will the discount be live, Caitlin? Um, we're going to do sixty days. So for the next days. So most of the summer, right? <laughs> Fantastic, love that. Okay, we yeah. appreciate your generosity so much. Okay, Larisha says um, she loves Amazon because everything is all in one place. She'd love to hear about what system you have to manage all the different affiliate programs you have, which is something we hear all the time. How do you keep track of them and manage seeing the sales? Sometimes well, sometimes not as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair so enough. Um, I do like we do have a really awesome spreadsheet that we have on our best blog courses as well for affiliate like management. Um, and so it has a lot of great features. And I use some of that. I keep I try to keep an eye on some of these things. But yeah, I use like the easy affiliate link and the advanced ads to just kind of help me like, oh, there's a promo code. We shove that on my blog real fast and it makes it speedier. But I just have like a spreadsheet with like all my login information and like um, the spreadsheet we have too has like details about like what categories are excluded. Cause you know, like Target, you can't make commissions on every category. Same with like Walmart and even Amazon, right? Like gift cards is 0%. But we forget all that stuff because it's a lot to keep track of between, you know, however many affiliate and companies you work with. So um, yeah, so just trying to organize it uh, with a spreadsheet of some kind or however you like to organize things is really helpful to have logins as well as like quick access links and some of these hopefully site-wide kind of things will help you too. Definitely. And what um, we're having some requests for the presentation. So we might be able to, if we can work with you a little bit afterwards, we can share the presentation in the comments, you guys, yeah. once, once we're done here. So we've got a lot of questions right now about asking how, what what your opinion is on the interaction between affiliate links and between Mediavine ads. We have a lot of people that, yeah. uh, especially in the finance niche, that are very into turning off ads on posts where they're pushing affiliates. So what is your opinion on that interaction? I keep all my ads there. <laughs> um, and I know I've, I've heard that and I do think it could be beneficial to not distract from your ads for affiliates within that Mediavine ads. But, you know, you have to realize with how many page views you get versus like, I don't know, it's a trade off. Because obviously, if it's converting really high and you want to play around with it, I would say experiment like on one post at a time, right? And just see if you see sales going up or if you don't notice a difference and then you're just losing on ad revenue. So I would just experiment and if that's something you really want to look at. But it's not something you're seeing cutting down in your affiliate earnings. The media buying ads are not distracting you. I haven't played around with it too much, to be honest, um, mostly because I like my earnings from media buying. <laughs> So, um, and you know, for as many people as visit a site, not everyone's clicking, right? So it's kind of this, well, I get those impression ad income as well as then people who are looking to buy are gonna filter through and ignore the ads, you know, so. That's good. I like that. I like that um, it's not something that you're seeing a whole lot of uh, restrictions. So just to recap on the things that you mentioned, that people would use. You were talking about the advanced ads plugin. You were talking about easy affiliate plugin. Are those so two different? Those are the two plugins you're talking about most. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great, fantastic. Alrighty, so let us go a little bit to this. We're all about optimizing existing content. We talk about it all the time here at Mediavine. Yeah. But we do those for um, RPM, so ad earnings, and for um, SEO as well. We have that RPM challenge. We do all sorts of things. How do you pick which posts? for your topic today, which you pitched us to speak out in Baltimore. How do you pick which posts are just 
ripe for uh, affiliate earnings and optimization? What, what makes a post a good candidate? Um, typically, I always recommend starting with the posts that get the best traffic. Um, so your top 10 posts start there. It's the easiest thing to do um, because affiliate marketing does still kind of rely on the number of visitors, especially well on your website. Right. So if you focus on the ones that get the most traffic, you'll probably see the biggest return on your investment. If a post gets like 10 hits a month, you know, like you're kind of wasting your time. So <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you are so, <laughs> real. Get down to it. Let's be honest. Yeah. So um, after that, I would say posts that get your best search traffic because search traffic, like I mentioned earlier, converts. People who are Googling things are typically looking for solutions, they're looking for reviews, they're looking for help. And if you're providing a solution to that question or whatever, then they're most likely to buy. So if you have good affiliate uh, products you're promoting in those, you can make more money from those. So even if they don't get as much traffic, they can convert quite well. And then, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then I would say, yeah. And then I would say just focus on like seasonal content, like things that are coming up. So you're just ahead of the game. So, you know, for this, it's summer travel or it's um, 4th of July and then back to school, obviously in the fall and then, you know, so on. And then, you know, you can look at content that was trending a year ago as well, that kind of seasonal thing there. So I would start with those and then, you know, you can build off, you know, go to your next top 10 and your next top 10 searched and so on. So basically it's how we recommend in terms of SEO and optimiz optimizing for RPM. The only thing that I've heard that is slightly different is that you are really focusing on the search traffic because that's what they're looking, they're looking to buy. So that that's great. So you're, when you're optimizing for SEO, you should be optimizing for affiliate as well. Anytime you're optimizing, yeah, kill, kill both of those birds with one stone. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Idle Thrills asked, uh, as, as far as location for the affiliate links, what is most successful for you? We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, okay, here's an interesting question from Yvette. Editing a popular post to include affiliate links, does that mess up the SEO if it's already ranking well? Um, no. No? <laughs> I, okay. mean, I mean, if you're changing a lot, but typically when you make minor changes like adding a hyperlink here and a hyperlink there or a little image, you're not screwing up the SEO algorithm, okay? Because it's not major content changes. I mean, you do want to be careful, obviously, because um, some things I, I will recommend later, you know, are adding things to your blog post. Um, and so if it's ranking really well, just be careful about that, obviously. So then maybe just do one of those tips at a time or something to make sure you don't lose those rankings. Okay, that makes sense. All right, which affiliate programs are your most successful? We've got a couple of people with this question. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm in the mom family home kind of niche, all right? So it'll be different for everybody. Um, I have, like I said, subscription boxes I've done really well with, um, like I did, and a lot of these is because of search traffic. Of course, my search traffic has kind of tanked in the last few months, but <laughs> um, thank you, Google, for changing some things. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I mean, Amazon makes me some, but yeah, I make a lot from like KiwiCo. Um, I've made a lot from like Trunk Club over the years. Um, I make money from some random affiliate partners too sometimes, like um, EnviroCleanse. I, I do cleaning content and, you know, they give me 20% commission. So, you know, and I have a couple of posts that feature their products and they're more unique and so people want them. Um, I've sold a lot of Newton baby crib mattresses uh, based on a post that I wrote about babies rolling over at night and the mattress you can breathe through and it's washable. So like, um, yeah, so kind of these, more unique programs, but I, I don't know. You don't have any just general, but you also talked some about creating content that, which is, a I mean, we could talk about affiliate marketing on different lives for 75 yeah. different episodes. Like we could, there's sure, so much. Sure. And as you were saying earlier, I was really interested in hearing about um, creating content specifically for that, but I really want to stick to the stuff that you uh, pitches and you want to talk about because we could talk about affiliate all day long. Yeah, and, I think <laughs> and I think that your courses are really great resources in yeah. terms of that additional information. So we will definitely continue sharing that as well. But if you've got, so, so let's say you've already got a post that has some affiliate links in it, but it's not converting. What types of things would you recommend making adjustments on? Um, so... I see this a lot. I, I work with people, they hire me to go through and optimize blog posts for them. 
Um, and a lot of times, you know, their link is just this little kind of afterthought, right? They're like, well, I hyperlinked all my supplies, but I don't make any sales, right? Uh, if it's a DIY tutorial or something. Um, but that's because you really need to kind of spice up and your presentation. And if you only ever hyperlink to it once, you're doing yourself a big disservice. People, I mean, you mentioned it at the top, but then they read the post. And they're like, wait, what do I buy? I ah, forget it. And they leave, right? Yeah. So you need to give them lots of opportunities to click if you really want to make sales. So it's having images. Even if the image is like your own image, you can still hyperlink it to um, their affi your affiliate link um, if it features you know, a Bosch mixer in it or you know, whatever you're using. Um, and so you kind of just want to look at how you promote things too. Sometimes it's about getting to click. Like we all know Amazon, we really just want people to click through and hopefully sure. they'll check out their cart, right? Um, <laughs> and At some there. point, <laughs> yeah. work those cookies. We want to work the cookies, absolutely. And so you have to get people to click. And so if you just have a list and you're like, okay, you know, get pencils, paper, you know, like generic terms. Um, and I think we have a slide about this too later, but I'm probably getting ahead of myself. You're so, <laughs> but um, like, it's really helpful to just, you know, make things easier. So some other things though is, um, you know, make sure the links you have, like they're avail available, right? And make sure that you're promoting products that are really the best fit to solve the problem or the issue that you're talking about in the post. So you might want to try a different affiliate partner, like maybe the thing you link to is just too expensive and your audience is like, forget that. Or it's just not their style or their taste. So you can maybe offer like a couple different alternative options. Um, you can add coupon codes because people love sales. <laughs> um, you can also just organize your content better. So you can have like a table of contents and one of the table of content parts can be like, you know, here's the coupon, right? So people can just click if they're ready to buy and just go right there um, so that they don't waste their time looking and searching and scrolling. And then they're like, ah, oh, it's too many ads. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, but, but some people really hate whatever. Scrolling. Some people, some people, well, some people really hate everything. Let's, yes. let's yes. just, so the, the Karen's are everywhere. Is, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So the more you can just get them to get to exactly what you want, the better. So just, you know, just make things sooner in the post too. Even if like you're gonna have like a big sales pitch at the end of your post, mention it at the beginning, like, hey, um, you know, like I, this is like for that mattress, the crib mattress I sold. Like I had a bunch of great information at the bottom, but I wasn't seeing high conversions, but the post was getting good traffic. So I made sure to add the coupon and like, hey, at the bottom is more information and just like some other stuff further up. And I got a lot more sales just for making a minor change, right? So it's yeah, you have to make it easy it. for people. Yeah, and make play it, with it. Right, and don't be afraid to tell them that like you're going to sell them something later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not not directly like like that, but you know what I mean. Like you're gonna have more information about this later because it's a great product, and then you know whatever. Being transparent about that, I also loved when you were saying that you were tying SEO with uh, affiliate marketing. When you said solving the problem, that is such a huge thing that we talk about all the time in SEO. That you're wanting to solve problems for your readers, you're wanting to figure out what they're asking, what's bringing them to you, and then figure out how you're going to easily solve that for them. Right. Fantastic. Okay. So, guys, for I've got a question for the audience out there, and we're going to move into this uh, with Caitlin as well, but. Before I ask her, I'm going to ask you, what is your best link placement for converting in your post? If you're doing affiliate marketing now, what do you, where do you find it within the post works best? And for Caitlin, what types of links convert the best for you? We've had a lot of people asking that. Um, so for me, like hyperlinks, they're all, they're always the best, um, okay. better than banners or images or something. Um, cause people just recognize hyperlinks and they're usually reading and sometimes kind of glaze over pictures, right? Because mm -hmm. we kind of get that ad fatigue. And so a banner isn't quite the same as an ad, but it's still that kind of, you know, scroll through. Yeah, it's a different look. Right. And I, we had some, I have some suggestions later about making your own banners that are definitely very apparent <laughs> that they aren't, you know, um, that they are clickable. But I would say um, just the higher something is in a post, the more sales you'll get on that item. So like sometimes I have posts that mention like 10 different 
companies or something. And the ones at the top typically get the most sales. And so sometimes I do rearrange the items or the order of affiliates or, you know, companies based on like commission rates or if they're, you know, sales or something just so that I can see if I make more money in it. And it has worked that like usually the first three in a list of 10 is going to get more of the sales than, you know, the bottom ones. Right. So when you're thinking about affiliate, do you, cause we are always talking about mobile first, think mm -hmm. about how your site is being consumed on mobile. Is that playing a role in your strategy for how you're using affiliate marketing and optimizing that mobile first mindset? Yeah. I mean, that's all part of this. The more organization to your post table of contents, the more headers, the more you break up the content, the more it's going to be easy for people to, you know, not get tired scrolling through and, you know, the same stuff that Mediavine suggests you do, you know, small paragraphs and that, you know, the same thing works for affiliate marketing too. Okay, we've got some more comments here. So uh, Leah Ingram was asking about earlier, she was saying that does the easy affiliate plugin recognize the names of your affiliates so that each time you type lands in, it automatically hyperlinks it? Is that what you were saying? No, it doesn't do it automatically. Okay. So when you're going to hyperlink it to lands in, you'll select the blue hyperlink button and then it'll pull up lands in for you. Okay. All right. Not quite as easy, but still pretty good. Still a good, still a good <laughs> shortcut. Okay. Brenda yeah. says, I find that coupon affiliate links are too much to keep up with. As a food blogger, most of my content is evergreen or seasonal, but I just don't have the time to go in and change something once the coupon offer is over. I believe you're going to talk about that a little bit later, ways to update your posts as you go forward in time. Yeah. I mean, that's what the advanced ads will do for you because, because you can set those expiry dates. So if you just like put in a short code for, you know, I don't know, bacon coupon or whatever. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, the next time it becomes available, you can just plug it in the back end and it'll show up in the post. And so it makes it easy. And they don't have to remember to delete it too. Cause yeah, everyone hates like that old coupon that you're like, oh, I mentioned that sale that was from 2017, right? So. <laughs> And then you get, and then Karen is so mad at you because your coupon expired two years ago and she's furious. Right, God, right, sorry. exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. That's my suggestions for that. Yeah, that's a really helpful thing. And so it will auto pull those things out. You set that ex expiration date, and that is super helpful. So you don't have to remember. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, Michelle Palin says, "How many of the same affiliate links will you include in one post?" Like she's specifically talking about asking about your post uh, with the bed. Um, so typically, like it depends on the, the type of post you're writing. Sure. But, um, you know, kind of near the top, maybe in the middle. And then if you're doing like a bigger kind of sales pitch for it, like in this mattress bed post, I did kind of a bigger thing. Um, you don't want it like every single time I say crib mattress or Newton baby or like it's a little overkill. All right. I'm not going to lie. Like you don't want to be like, OK, I get it. You want me to make a purchase. All right. I get it. <laughs> right. Because. So, too many hyperlinks and this looks spammy. So I would just do it, you know, maybe every other every couple of paragraphs. Again, it depends on how you're doing it. But, you know, at the very beginning, when I first start talking about something, I definitely hyperlink it first. So people are just like, what? And they just want to click through right away. They can do so. Um, and I definitely click it at the end with a strong call to action, like get yours now or with the coupon code or learn more or take advantage of the sale, you know, so strong click language at the end of kind of me talking about that particular product. Um, but then maybe once or twice kind of between the first hyperlink and the last call to action. So it sounds like maybe in the two to four range for the same affiliate link. Yeah, probably. Okay. That's good advice. All right. Um, we've got uh, Leah Ingram actually said, my posts are so long that I just put links throughout. Fair enough. That's what you were just advising. I have been using the Create plugin more, and I think that's helping with affiliate conversions. Absolutely. Create has a lot of wonderful options that uh, works with Amazon's API directly, just giving those permissions to each. Caitlin, do you have any experience with Create? I haven't used it yet. <laughs> that's okay. That's totally okay. If you're if you're out there and you're using Create, go ahead and share in the comments. Well, you should because there's ways to do it and create beautiful how-to and lists and all of those things that really help. We also have a help doc that we can post in there too to talk about more ways that you can use Create for affiliate earnings because that's such a huge asset for a plugin to be able to give you assistance. So uh, Amy Sugarman says, can I just hire someone to add these links and manage my affiliate strategy for me? Is that a thing? Caitlin, is that a thing? Um, you can hire anyone to do anything. 
Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, so I don't, I, I offer like site or like post optimizations, um, but I don't go into their site because sometimes like I need to know, like they need to apply to programs and I can't get approved for sure. them. And that's stuff that like I don't want access to. And I necessarily want to go and create a user and do some things. Um, and also because I give it to you, you kind of learn the process, I hope, like what to do so that like every time you make a new post, you can do it yourself. Give, a man, your give <laughs> yeah. a man an affiliate link post, let's optimize and he'll have one good post. Teach a person to affiliate link. Yeah. You'll have, you'll have conversions for days. Okay. Um, Mir Mirko says, does it help saying something like, quote, buy at Amazon uh, as opposed to, um, like uh, hyperlinking the product name or the title. What do you see in terms of that for the, for the actual hyperlink language? Um, so that's why like I typically do hyperlink like the first mention of the product name and then also do a strong call to action hyperlink as well. So yes, saying by now does make a difference. Absolutely. Okay, how many times do you like, oh, that's really nice, but if, like no one actually like directly invites you to do something, are you gonna do it? So much right. psychology, like you're waiting, you're just waiting yeah, for someone to say, it. buy it, do it, do it now. Yeah. And then do I see, it. and then I'm like, you're right, I should do it. I do deserve this. These shoes, right. I need these shoes. Right. So some uh, people do think, I mean, you can do also play around with the language specifically, like, so check out the price on Amazon or, you know, um, and you can not say Amazon if you don't want to, but I feel like some people like knowing where they're going. And so they might, they might not click if they're like, where is this gonna take me, some spammy yeah. site? So it's helpful sometimes to make it very clear where they're going and where you're sending them and all that. But yeah, get it now, buy now, um, learn more is okay. It's not as strong, but um, you know, take advantage of this sale. All, the, all those things are great. Don't wait. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so we had some more questions. We've been posting a bunch of lists on People to help or having people say I started I use it I love it the list and now twos are perfect easy to add links we agree um, so Anna is asking does the create plugin do the same thing as the advanced ads plugin or do I need both no they're very they're different things um, create your is is basically a most valuable content plugin where you can incorporate affiliate links um, from Amazon into those in your how-to list or whatever advanced um, advanced Sorry, the, the comments just blurred while I was talking. Uh, well, I'll go back to that. Yeah, uh, the plugin that you're recommending, Advanced Ads, is different. Yeah, it's different. Okie doke, let's go to some more here. So how do you choose what to link to when you're linking? Okay, so first and foremost, you need to think about your audience, right? Um, and think about, well, if someone is reading this post, what would help them the most? to solve this problem or this dilemma or help them follow my tutorial to the T because some people really want to do it exactly like you did it. Sure. Um, so like what would help them or enhance their process and learning how to do something or whatever it is. I mean, even if it's like talking about toddler tantrums, it's like, well, hey, here's this book or you can try these calm down beads or you can, you can give them just those additional resources, right? Um, just really be super helpful. So if, think about yourself as like, I really want to solve this problem. And then think about affiliate products or just think about products and then find out how you can affiliate for them. That's sometimes I reverse engineer things a little yeah. bit. And that way, like, okay, so this, this would be a great post and these would be great products that would fit that. Let's find out if there's affiliates for it. Um, Love that. Yeah, so, but, uh, and then, you know, once you kind of figure out and join programs or, get your links, it's, um, you know, sometimes it's a matter of, is it in stock? <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, if you're doing like a tutorial and, you know, you can't find the exact fabric you used or you can't, um, that same color paint is no longer, you know, discontinued. It's right. important then to maybe alter, uh, offer alternative options. Um, Cause you have to keep in mind your audience isn't exactly like you. And so sometimes things that are like, well, this was really expensive, but you know, there is this other one in case you don't have quite as much money or, you know, there's a different color or different size or a different style so that you let people know that like, they don't need to get the exact one in case they're like, well, I do, I do like this, but is there something that's made all natural or that's organic or, you know, so you can give them options and that will be 
helpful too. Um, and then, you know, I look like if you're talking about Amazon, especially like, is there free shipping on it? Is there, is it prime eligible? I usually try to stick to things that are just prime eligible. Typically then they don't go out of stock or they stay around a little bit longer. Cause that is a problem when you have, you know, you go and click through something and you're like, Oh, this is no longer available. Great. Right. So you don't want that as much as possible. So sometimes too, that I just link to like on, Amazon or any other website like Walmart or something, a landing page for, you know, that type of product, right? High chairs or, you know, car seats or whatever it is. Um, oh, that's helpful. Rather than that specific product, you're linking to a landing page, but that only works for affiliate programs, which work like Amazon, where it doesn't matter the specific product, but you're still yeah. going to get the, get the right. green if you, if you yeah. get the Yeah. So a bigger commerce kind of store, right? Sure. Um, Oh yeah, so you can link then to like, I mean, that's what deep linking's for, right? You link to those category pages and then you don't have to worry so much about like an individual thing that you link to. And that's more if you're not like telling them specific items that like they need, right? But um, just kind of generic. So, um, and then I often, especially if it's like an everyday item, like I, I link to things like vinegar and hydrogen peroxide, right? And obviously we all know those are dirt cheap at the grocery store, all right? So if I'm looking at Amazon, cause like they are like, go get a bottle of peroxide. It's like less than a buck at Walmart, okay? Yeah. yeah. But you, but you look at, at Amazon and sometimes it's like, oh, they're charging six bucks for a bottle. Like no one's going to spend that like because they're not fools. Hopefully. But um, <laughs> so I try to like search for like the bulk one that is a better deal or, you know, something because I understand that they could just go to the store and then I don't get the sale for it. So think about like think about that, especially for everyday things. Uh, yeah. Um, and then obviously look for high commission rates, <laughs> uh, you know, and that's always good. So if there's like a couple networks you belong to and maybe, you know, they're on two different programs, you can see which one offers a higher rate. Do a little research on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we have a question on, again, where are you finding your affiliate programs? Are you talking about ShareASale? Are you talking about CJ? Are you talking about Apogee somewhere else? Yes, <laughs> um, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I belong to a lot of networks um, because I've been doing this for a long time. So sorry, um, definitely Amazon, CJ, Share Sale, Impact Radius, um, Pepper, sorry, Pepper Jam Network and a couple other ones. But I also belong then to a bunch of other kind of smaller programs and networks. Um, and yeah, and then from there, you just find your partners that you want to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, is, is your go-to, Michelle wants to know, is your go-to still Amazon for general products or with the cut in commissions has another major retailer become your go-to? It's so hard. It like, Obviously, they, this is a new change with Amazon just offering like 1% to 3% on most items, right? Um, but generally, I'm still finding that Amazon's the easiest to kind of link to because people buy more frequently kind of everyday items from Amazon versus walmart.com or something. And so, you know, other retailers don't sell these small everyday items, right? So I I mean, for years, I've been trying not to just promote Amazon because, you know, the sales are pennies on the dollar, right? Um, and so that's why things like subscription boxes are things that offer those like bigger bounties, like you make 20 bucks for every one sale is pretty awesome. Um, so if you can figure out how to make more of those, that's great. But yeah, for everyday kind of general products, it's still Amazon. Okay. And then uh, Amazon also would work. We have um, a travel blogger who's asking about recommendations beyond uh, just Amazon for that. So but Amazon works for travel bloggers. Amazon works for everyone. Do you have any specifics for travel bloggers though? Um, I do. I've worked with um, helping optimize some travel bloggers' websites. Great. Thank you. Um, Obviously, um, I don't have a memorized, I don't work and travel <laughs> myself. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, there's all sorts of things, you know, like booking.com and hotels.com and, um, well, besides booking, but there's also like, um, you know, you could do what TripAdvisor, I think has a pretty good program right here as well. And um, I think those, a lot of those are in CJ, I think. But um, yeah, there's, there's unique ways you can promote things on Amazon that don't have to be, I'm oh, sorry, promote travel without being on Amazon. I sure. think, again, you just have to kind of be creative. There's a lot of like luxury, I feel like, especially travel 
uh, brands and companies and luggage companies that would love to work with people to help them promote it. Obviously, you have to weigh the unfamiliar territory with um, products that aren't maybe as recognizable or that have their own programs because people typically, they go to Amazon when they start their searches, right? And so um, when you're looking for, this is a little off topic, but you're <laughs> good. <laughs> when you're looking for, you know, new partners, you know, it's, you do have to weigh kind of the, is it worth promoting this versus something that's on Amazon? Uh, because people do just buy more on Amazon and you have to think about, well, the commission rate might be a lot higher, but is anyone going to buy it? And so sometimes I actually look at their website itself. And I think there's a couple of things you do then when you look at their website, you, you have to look at like, what is your landing page look like? Like, how easy is it to check out, especially too? Does it look trustworthy? Like, does it look really dated? Like, these things are huge turnoffs to people. And so even if you drive 100 clicks, because you're selling it great on your end, if they don't close the sale, you're not going to close the sale either. So it's important to realize that when you're working with other companies outside of kind of major retailers, is that their website has to close the sale. So if you're looking at them, you, you should ask them, or if they don't have it advertised, like, well, what's your you know, what's your click through rate and what's your buy rate and, you know, what's the EPC, you know, earnings per click and like, what's the average commission people are seeing based on those clicks and things. So there's a lot of questions you can ask them to kind of help you determine if it's worth promoting or not. That's fantastic. Is that actually in your course too, like a list of questions yeah. to ask for affiliate, potential affiliates? That's great. That's very helpful yeah. thing. And yeah. do you have a recommendation on who you're going to, to ask these questions? Uh, so, I mean, like I said, some just offer it like on their landing page for their you know, sure. affiliate program um, or uh, whatever, right? Um, like, you know, CJ and like ShareSale, they have all the information like right sure. there on their on their, on their their merchant pages. Um, but otherwise you can just reach out via their contact page and ask okay. about the affiliate program. That's usually what I do. That's fantastic, great. Okay, so we, I wanted to talk about getting people to click and then beyond links kind of going outside just the hyperlink box. What else can we do to get people to buy? And I'm going to actually probably disappear again so we can go. Okay. And the screen share. <laughs> yeah. 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 So here is uh, spicing up the text and adding hyperlinks. Okay. So I've kind of talked about this, but here's kind of some examples. Um, you guys see this? Okay. So um, like, so the first one is like an example of, a blog post that I had. Actually, I think I had a contributor, right? But you know, it mentioned some products, right? But they weren't hyperlinked before. And instead of just hyperlinking underneath, you know, compression, whatever I have there, I can't read it. But um, <laughs> um, I spiced up too, and I added like some name brands. I added um, some description to the links rather than just hyperlinking to them. So that way it's a little more exciting. You're like, ooh, what's this company? I haven't heard about them that sell maternity clothes. I haven't, um, I'm not familiar with them. And so again, curiosity is a big seller. Um, and so is novelty, okay? I know um, some people do really good things. Like if they mention Band-Aids, they don't just like hyperlink under Band-Aids. Say like, oh, this really unique uh, Band-Aid that smells when you scratch it or something. People are like, what the heck is that, right? Click, I gotta see this. So like, um, it's one of those things where you just need to, um, sorry, you need to, oh, is that, okay. you need to entice people to really see what, um, like we want people to click. And so adding some intriguing language, even if it's a descriptive language, um, can help a lot with that. On the right side then, it's like a generic supply list, right? There weren't hyperlinks before. And then after you can see, like I add a lot of different unique um, language to get hopefully get people to click, okay? So I've got to see. Um, so like the first one, for example, I'm adding like specific things that I talked about. Oh yeah, I like finding it at Michael's. It's like the best price. So people are like, oh, is it? I'll trust your opinion. And they the, they know where they're going then too. And they can click through and see it. And then, you know, you're talking about glue stick, right? Everyone has glue stick. Everyone knows where to get those. Um, but I have a link that's like, oh, you can buy it in bulk here, right? So even though it's a generic product, I'm like, hey, buy it in bulk here. So you're stocked up and you don't have to worry about it. It's a good price, I'm assuming, right? Um, and then, and then I link like a specific um, 
a specific type or brand name of acrylic paints rather than just saying acrylic paint and people don't know where they're going. Um, and so, but yeah, I hope you can see that like, I'm trying to list like company names and specific things rather than just saying paintbrush, dish soap, acrylic paint, glue sticks, various cardstock. You are the expert and people want to know exactly where you shop, where you like to save money when you shop for craft supplies and all these things. And it can totally work for food, especially too. You know, this is kind of like the supply list thing. So um, people love this kind of stuff. Okay, and then um, if we go to the next slide. Okay, so here's this kind of ugly banner I was talking about. This is the one that Katie made, Katie Clark, for her website. You'll notice a couple of things. First, she's got a Vandy coupon code, Clark's 600, right? Um, which Vandy coupon codes are really nice to have because they typically are more evergreen or you can hopefully work with your affiliate partner and then you don't have to change out your language on your post all the time. Um, but she is trying to make it a little more ugly. Um, and so that sticks out from a regular pretty ad, right? Um, and you can see exactly what um, you you want to buy. And she's got a finger, like click to redeem. Obviously, like you can use language like that, like click to redeem, click here, use my link to get, you know, 60% off or whatever. Like people like knowing that kind of language and that it works. Um, and so this is kind of, you know, an, a way to do that. And then she could put this in using advanced ads um, and to any post that's like a craft related post perhaps, um, or she can, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, was that, I think that's most of it. Um, so then beyond just links. So, yeah, so I would say too, when you're, when you're optimizing your posts and you're going back through to edit them, organization is a big part, like I've mentioned before. So there's some things too. Um, so like I showed the slides, like you want to look for product mentions that maybe you didn't hyperlink before. And so even if it's in passing, you know, Elmer's glue, or I use a stapler, or I mean, whatever, you can spice it up and add a hyperlink. And you know, it's all about making sales and making people click. So it, you don't have to go into a big sales speech about a stapler or glue sticks, but you can hyperlink and you can like add like find a weird glue stick thing out there or you know like novelty is a big thing with affiliate marketing right and some people like finding new products that solve you know unique problems right um and then you know adding a supply list or a resource list great um adding a um where to buy section is also great because some people hate Walmart or they hate Amazon. And so if you can list like other places online where they can buy supplies, that's great. And people who love Amazon will go to Amazon, that's fine. But giving options, I have always felt is really helpful um, for affiliate marketing because people trust you, I feel like too, because trust is a, is a thing <laughs> that you need to have. Um, Cause so yeah, so for me, when I'm listing, for example, like I have a post like, uh, what, uh, 13 different alternatives to Stitch Fix, right? And instead of just listing out like the names of all 13, I go through and I talk about like, this is what makes this one different from Stitch Fix. And I go through like, this is their return window. This is how much items typically cost that are in the box. This is what sizes they carry. And I go through and I list out all the details. I think sometimes we're worried about being salesy that we don't want to include all the details in our blog posts but in my experience i have found that people really like that i try to make the sale before they ever click through to buy the item so if i already answer all their items because i took the time to go to their faq page and i took the time to research well you know what's the return policy and what's the shipping window and all the information that they might also be curious about I save them that time. So they're like, oh, this is what I want to do. This one works best for me. Um, and so giving like the 13 options too, obviously is a little overkill perhaps, right? But <laughs> but like that's <laughs> but it depends. So <laughs> but people want to know, like, well, what else is there? I've heard of Stitch Fix, everyone talks about it, but I don't, I don't, I don't like it for whatever reason. And so you just go through and explain how other companies that are similar work and operate that's a little different, or if it's pretty much the same, because there are some that are very similar. So but you're doing the comparison shopping for them. You're, you're taking all exactly. the work out of it. They don't have to do any of the things. Exactly. And that, that's basically the biggest tip I've seen. You want to be transparent about the fact that you're selling, like not say, yeah. 
I am a salesperson, but but saying I'm going to give you the opportunity to buy this or I'm going to link yeah. you to where you can go to is do your research and answer questions. Basically solve their problem for them within the context of your post. And you said even just taking the things from their FAQ and restating it in your post makes it to where they don't have to click around and go to different places and love that. Yes. All right. So before before we go, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. Larisha is 100% spot on that today's live is basically a, a 2020 uh, encapsulation right here in one hour. Just And Caitlin is what amazing. She said Caitlin is a trooper. Caitlin is a trooper. She's amazing. She's pregnant with twins and she's still here. Uh, <laughs> And I'm so grateful. So Caitlin, what I'm going to have, um, if you would tell them, I want to talk to you about your course for your last thing before you say what people will find when they go click over and what would be the course that you would recommend if people want to continue learning what you and I have been talking about for this last hour. Uh, if, tell them yeah. where they need to go and what course. And we're going to share that link again. And I'm yeah. going to make a couple of announcements before I come back. Guys, thank you for being patient with us today. We have another live next Thursday, July 2nd at 3 p.m. Eastern. I mean, that's our theory. We'll start at 3 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be with Sherry Smotherman Short of Cub Scout Ideas and Painless Blog Analytics. We're going to be talking about how to use Google Analytics to improve your site performance. Plus, we're going to be pairing Google Analytics with the new Mediavine dashboard and pay that page RPM data, ways to work those things together. And then for those of us who, <laughs> when I clicked the wrong link and put us in the the uh, Monday's live on Monday, June 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern, Mediavine CEO Eric Hochberger is joining me for a special State of the Vine to talk about Trellis. I mean, we'll talk about other things as well, other Mediavine updates, exciting things, but really we know that you want to know about Trellis. So that's what we're going to be talking about on Monday. So please, uh, please join us then. Join us Monday, join us Thursday and if you have to miss any of these, please subscribe on our YouTube channel. We will, uh, we always upload these. Uh, we will delete the craziness that happened and we will upload it there. So you have Caitlin's amazing content available to you at all times. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and Caitlin, let's finish up with you too. Will you please tell us a little bit more about your courses? Yeah. So, um, I created a landing page for you, Medivine people too so it makes it nice and easy to learn what my affiliate yeah. offerings are yeah. for you because i have a couple of products i mentioned we have a spreadsheet that's like ten dollars but it's awesome um we have a, i just launched a free introduction to affiliate marketing class so if this whole video was like totally over your head go ahead and start there um <laughs> and then um we just updated um a course that's called kind of beyond amazon associates and how to up your long-term affiliate strategy using programs outside of affiliate. And in that one, we cover a lot of what we covered today, but we also go and I have big lists of awesome programs in every niche, like for like 15 different niches. So I know like we had travel question and I'm like, I have a list, but I don't have it here. So <laughs> it's in my course. Um, <laughs> Cause yeah, so those are not on top of the course. Yeah, go, it's all yeah. there. So it's all there. Um, it's got great information, um, but it talks about too, how to use affiliate marketing on social media on each different channel, uh, as well as YouTube and video. And it also talks about optimizing, you know, email marketing um, for affiliate marketing as well, because we didn't have time to go into all of that. Too much. It's too much. Affiliate marketing we talk about for Ever, ever days weeks yeah, yeah. Um, and so like I hope it's it's very helpful um, but yeah we can take 10% off with the summer of live code um, that's good for the next 60 days so summer it up right um, <laughs> but yeah and then I do offer still the post optimization that I offer five of those uh, five posts um, at a time just so I don't have to get overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, but you get like a nice Word doc with me with a bunch of like recommendation, recommendations for affiliate programs based on the content. I read every word on those blog posts and I click every link on those. Um, and I make sure that they're going to good places and that things are working and opening in the right windows and all that. Um, and people have loved them. So if that's something that you just want direct help with and that personal feedback, I would look into those as well. Awesome. Caitlin, you, you are a great okay. resource. We have shared okay. your slides. We made a copy of what you shared. It's got, it's got the information. It's got the code. It's got the link. You've got everything that you guys need, plus everything she talked about today. She is a savior. You guys are amazing for following us. Please have a wonderful weekend and a big round of applause for Caitlin and the team. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you, guys.